Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to talk about lipos and not just any lipos. We're going to talk about these guys, 1S lipos, high volt, standard voltage, doesn't matter. 1S voltage lipos. We're going to talk about these because I fly a lot of micros. I fly a lot of non micros. And one thing is in common between all of those is you need to charge these. You need to maintain them. You don't need to maintain them, but if you want to get the most life out of these, you probably should maintain them. So if you fly micros, you probably have a lipo charger like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, or maybe even one like that. And these, they all work. And all they all do the same thing. They charge the lipos. But when we start talking about our big brother in here, the full-size lipos, we do more than just charge these. We balance them, we discharge them, we storage charge them. There's more maintaining going on with these than with these. So why do we not maintain these batteries? Um, I put a video out a while ago, right here, about being able to use a 1S balance board, kind of like this one, with a standard LiPo charger. And the issue with using a board like this is if I plug in my LiPos here, the only part that's gonna get power is the balance port, not the XT60. So the way the battery chargers work is they pump voltage in here and they monitor cell voltage here. And if the cells get out of balance, it stops feeding in voltage here and it starts siphoning power off here to kind of maintain the balance of the battery packs. You gotta have power here, so that's why I tied in this connector to here so I could get power, or at least the balance board voltage on this. But that's a lot of hassle, and I don't know, I really don't like these boards. They're, I don't know, it's too much. It's, it's kind of a hassle. Uh, and with that, you can use your standard LiPo charger, like this ISDT608AC uh, to balance, destroy, uh, discharge, there is a better solution out there. And it is this guy here. This is by the Flying Sandal. And he has done something that is honestly very simple, but just really hasn't been done in a very good way yet. So the difference between this and this is this is a parallel board. So it's going to put each pack in parallel with each other. Whereas this one puts them in series. So when you hook up four batteries to this, your battery charger will think you're charging a 4S LiPo, like that guy. There's a few other advantages to doing it this way, is voltage difference between cells really isn't that big of a factor. Because, I mean, how many times do you fly your multi-rotor, your large ones, and you have an imbalance in cell voltage? You may have like a 3.8, 3.9, a 3.8, and a 3.7, and they're fine. But if you're to put a fully charged pack here and a completely discharged pack here, you're gonna run the chance of having a fire because these two packs are gonna feed directly into each other. So we talk about balance versus series. So this battery, And these four batteries on the surface look very different, but in reality, there's not a whole lot of difference between this. This 4S pack is literally just one pack made of four single cells. Now the capacity of these cells is obviously much larger than these, but the voltage is exactly the same. Each one of these batteries charges up to, let's say, let's just keep it standard voltages up to 4.2 volts each one of these individual cells charges up to 4.2 volts. Now, each cell in this case is only 450 milliamps, whereas each cell here is 1300. So let's take a look at the anatomy of a 4S battery pack. Ooh, this pack stinks. That really sweet smell to it, so you know it's bad. Now, I don't recommend you tear apart your battery packs like this. I do happen to know exactly what I'm doing. So, 
keep that in mind. I'm not just going about this all willy-nilly like. As you can see, there's our four cells and these are non-conductive tweezers, so don't worry too much about it. We have our main discharge lead, so that's, that's ground and power. And what that's doing is just taking the overall voltage of all four of these cells added together. And that's what gives us our 4S voltage. Now, if we had two more cells, it'd be a six, two more on top of that eight, so on and so forth. So each one of these in individual cells has a positive and a negative. So here's the negative and there's the positive. The positive of this cell here connects to the negative of this cell here. The positive of this cell connects to the negative of this one, the positive of this one connects to the negative of this one, and so on and so forth. Now the manufacturer adds this balance lead to the ground, to each of the cells so we can figure out what the voltage of each cell is in relationship to the entire pack. So this is, total pack voltage, and this is individual cell voltage. Well, that's the gist of how a multi-cell LiPo works. So before we talk about these little guys, let's try to break it down into something that's a little bit easier to see. Let's take these 18650 cells for example. Now, if we wanted to make a, again, let's just say these are all 4.2 volts and they're, I don't know what the capacity is. Let's say they're a thousand milliamps each. So let's say we wanted to make a 16.8 volt pack out of this at Again, let's just say these are a thousand milliamps each, a thousand milliamps. We would connect them like so. So you go negative to positive, negative to positive. So I connect these two, connect these two, connect these two. And then we'd have our main power lead coming off of up here. And that would give us a 4S pack at basically 16.8 volts, 1000 milliamps. Now let's say I wanted a 4.2 volt pack, but I want it to be 4,000 milliamps. It would be like this. It'd be very easy to connect up. You would connect all of these together and have one discharge lead here, like that. And you connect all of these together and have one discharge lead like that. This plug here would be 4.2 volts, but you would have 4,000 milliamps of capacity. We didn't increase voltage, we increased capacity. So now let's relate it back to our 1S packs and our series board here. With this series board connected, like so. Now with our series board connected, our charger sees us as a four cell LiPo. Even though these are just one cell LiPos, it is no different than the construction of this battery pack here it treats it exactly the same. If there's a cell voltage mismatch, it doesn't really matter. So now if I did this on a, on a parallel board, like this guy here, we would probably run the risk of having a fire because this battery pack here is much lower voltage than the rest of these ones here. With a series board, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all because there is no electron flow in and out of this because of these, they're all in series. Whereas in parallel, yeah, most likely a fire. So the really convenient thing about this is now I can just bring this all down to storage voltage. So for current, we would just want to do one C of 450. So that's basically 0.4 amps. So that's a one C discharge rate. And we hit start. And what this is doing now is it's pulling voltage out of all three of these cells through the balance port, not through this port, this is just for monitoring, until they all match up. So this one is gonna have no power taken out or added to it. In general. But let's say we wanna charge this misbalanced set of LiPos here. What's gonna happen is we are going to push in 4s voltage so 16.8 volts is going to come through here of course chargers do ramp up and ramp down their charge rate but we're not going to take that into consideration here so it's going to pump in 16.8 volts here that's going to go to all these packs but the charger sees there's a an imbalance here so it is now siphoning voltage off of this cell this cell and this cell until they get pretty well lined up with this one and then it's going to stop taking voltage out of these three cells and gonna continue pushing voltage in. And most chargers, once they get to the end of the cycle, they kind of balance everything out even 
closer so it'll push in less amperage and slowly discharge each cell. So power comes in from here, power goes out from here. That's how basically all modern chargers work. I'm sure there are some that work a little bit different, but so a few things about the Flying Sandal series board that I noticed is um, the, cell vol the cell numbers here, they're not quite right. So the cell numbers are, are mislabeled, they are backwards. You can use this board from 2S to 4S, so you don't really need these two here. Your charger will just see this as a 2S pack instead. And then as you add one in here, it'll be three, and one in here, it'll, it'll be a four S pack. The construction is superb. Um, Jorge said he builds these things in his basement. He cuts the P PCBs himself. I assume he does all the soldering. This is incredible, incredible quality here. The, the silicone main discharge leads are 100% overkill. Could have certainly went with something way cheaper than this, but um, I'm assuming it probably came as a set like this. Same thing with the balance lead. This is all really well constructed. Something I would like to see uh, that I think would make this an even better product is a little bit of variety for, we have the PH 2.0, it'd be nice to see the BT 2.0, the new beta FPV plug style. Um, those are becoming increasingly com more common and I've been using them on basically all my 1S builds since they do perform quite a bit better. Uh, the base material here, I believe he told me these, this is made out of PLA. So I wouldn't leave this in a hot car. You'll come out and it might be completely warped and distorted. Uh, but other than that, this is an excellent product. It doesn't, and it's, it's very cheap because it doesn't rely on one of these coming with it. You just use your own. I would say, guess that most of us out there flying 1S, whoops, probably have some sort of multi-cell smart charger. And that helps keep the cost of this entire idea down. This is an excellent idea. Kudos to him for coming up with this. He is selling these through race day quads. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give one of these to my viewers. I'm going to give one to my patrons to enter the giveaway for this. Go ahead and look at the Google form down in the video description. Go ahead and click on that and put your info in there. And if you want even better odds, go ahead and join my Patreon. I don't have a whole lot of people in there. So I give away stuff all the time and you shall have much better odds over there. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by and checking this out. This is the Flying Sandal 1S series board. Again, incredible idea, great job. Why has nobody done this sooner? I'm surprised. Be on the lookout for URUAV's version of this. I'm sure it's coming because any good idea gets copied right away. Great job. All right, folks. I will see you all next time. And if you have any questions about how batteries work, uh, I don't know, go look at Electro Boom or something. All right, we'll see you around.